I'm back now with three delightful people, and I shall introduce them to you immediately. Alexis Smith, who is starring in The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, a play based on a real story about what happened to a, a little whorehouse in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the play is at the Schubert Theater and will be there at least through July 6th, unless popular demand says Demands. that they'll have to go longer, and this may be. Sidney Sheldon is my next guest, and he has been on the show before with other books, and this is his new one, Rage of Angels, a book about a young feminine lawyer. It's published by Morrow, by the way, and you may find it in your bookstores. A book about a young uh, feminine lawyer who makes a very grave mistake just as her career is starting and what happens thereafter, and uh, a great many things happen. You'll have to read the book to find out. And finally, Margaret Truman, and Margaret has a book which has just been named, or has been named, a Book of the Month Club Alderman, Murder in the White House. This is Miss Truman's first novel, I believe. Yes, that's although right. Although she has written a marvelous book about her father, and you wrote at least one other book. I've written five. Five? You've written at least, uh, she's done at least four other books. Uh, <laughs> Arbor House. And uh, you've had a good reception, have you? So far, very good, yes. Yeah. Were there murders in the White House while you were there? Not I that I know that of. <laughs> Not that I know of, Bob. No. You must have had fun, though. Was it sort of like reliving the old days? I don't know whether it was fun or not exactly. It's much easier to write history than oh, to write. I bet. But novel. did you go back and refresh your memory a little about the location of this and that? No, and... I got uh, Clem Conger, the curator, to send me the floor plans. Ah, I. Sure. I have to send Clem a book. I, you know, he didn't know well, what I, what the I wanted them for. Well, it's least you can do. Yes. 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 <laughs> he found out later what I wanted them for. <laughs> he didn't mind, did he? No, I think he did. No, I think it's marvelous. You, you know, your biographies a lie. They claim that you were a movie star in the 40s, and that's not possible. Unless oh, yes. they had eight-year-old movie stars in the 40s. <laughs> no, that's very true. It's not lying. I was in the 40s, and... Uh, you don't remember me? No. No? <laughs> no. They we're off to a good start, right? I remember you very well. <laughs> I like remember you. Yes. you. Thank you, Margaret. I remember some of your plays, and I remember your name, but, but you were such a tiny little girl. That I see. I, yeah. you, you were too young for me, actually, you see. <laughs> is it fun doing this play? Yes, it is. I enjoy working musically, working in musicals, mm -hmm. and, uh, and this is a very light piece, and, uh, and it's great fun to do, an exceptional company. You have some marvelous people in it. Yes, we really do. I never knew that the governor of Texas could uh, uh, tap dance before. <laughs> Maybe they should elect him. <laughs> Wouldn't it be wonderful? <laughs> and I also liked Watchdog very yes, much. Yes, Larry Holvis. Yes. Yeah. And the sheriff. He's wonderful. You know, that was a very touching, as it was supposed to be, a very touching scene, that farewell between you and the sheriff. Oh, I'm so glad. That, that pleases me a great deal, because Bill Hardy, who plays the sheriff, and I worked on that, and it's not, the, the relationship is not really developed very much, and so we're playing subtext principally, and the fact that you felt that way is, mm -hmm. is very rewarding. But uh, he certainly should have remembered where he was when... Uh, <laughs> on that night. When, uh, when <laughs> Jack was inaugurated, yes. Yes, should have yes, remembered. he should. But you, it's interesting because uh, Bill, well, Margaret's not seen, no, Margaret and Sidney have not seen the show. No, not yet. But uh, he uh, plays a kind of redneck sheriff, and he's a very, very fine actor and uh, has worked in Houston in the Alley Theater, which is a very good theater, for years. He's been a producer and, and an actor down there. Director and actor, yeah. and uh, has done the classics and musicals and serious dramas. So he really is a, a consummate actor and a joy to work with, I must say. And he's in love with uh, Miss Mona. This is Miss Mona. Yes. I don't blame Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're no, prejudiced. It, no, that was very realistic. You could understand it completely. How many have you done now? I'm not going to just make a mistake and say you've done four other books. How many other books have you done? <laughs> four other books. That's what I thought. <laughs> yes, Rage of Angels is my fifth book. Yeah. It's a little different. It's not as, as, as openly sexual as your others. I've been told it's a little different from my usual style, and it wasn't conscious on my part. I'm not really aware of it. I, I just take an idea and develop it for a year and a half or two years as well as I know how. It sounds as though you might have written it after your mother spoke to you sternly about some of your earlier books. No, now, Bob, as far as sex is concerned in my books, they, it stems from the characters. I write about sex because it's a natural part of any normal person's life. For example, in The Other Side of Midnight, as you know, I have two heroines, mm -hmm. Noel and Catherine. Catherine is a very sweet girl, rather naive, and her sex scenes are just that. They come out of her character, whereas Noel is a born courtesan, and her, she's very daring and innovative in sex. And the sex scenes I wrote reflect that. But they come out of the characters, not out of me. Which girl did you like better? 
I like them both. I felt sorry for Catherine. Mm. And of course, they both this, ended up this, this heroine is, is a, a very sensual lady, but the, the sex scenes are quieter somehow. That may be. Yeah. A lot happened to her in other terms. It's a marvelous opening, by the way. Oh, thank oh, you. Tell, tell, tell Margaret the opening, because it won't hurt anything. It's only in the first four pages. It's a girl who goes to work at the district attorney's office in New York. Tell Alexis, too. Lawyer. I'm sorry. <laughs> you did say tell Margaret. I'll tell them both. She goes to work in the trying district. trying to find the right camera. <laughs> yes. I'll just eavesdrop and say, okay. No, I'll tell all of them. <laughs> she goes to work in the district attorney's office. It's her first day. And she's very idealistic. Her father was an attorney, and the law is her life. Within 30 minutes, she is under arrest, facing imprisonment, facing disbarment for something that she really was not responsible for. She was tricked. She and certainly I don't, was. Yes. Yeah. And I don't, I don't want to give the trick away, but that's the beginning. She's absolutely destroyed within 30 minutes of beginning her new job. What do you do for an encore? Well, <laughs> what she has to do... You want destroy her. <laughs> yes, exactly. What she has to do is to fight her way through all this. No one will talk to her. She's a joke in the legal profession. And no in the newspapers. Will, and in the newspapers, yeah. yes. They, they make fun of her. And, and she's almost broken, but not quite. She's a very courageous lady. And she's determined to remain a lawyer and to win her way to the top. And she does. She becomes the best criminal attorney in the country. And whoops the dickens out of the district attorney who was trying to get her disbarred on several occasions. Now, I'm curious. Sydney, I'd read where you were going to produce uh, your next book. I mean, the, for the film of your next book. Is yes. this the one that you will produce? This is the one. I will produce Because Rage you were Rangers. unhappy with what had been done in the past. With I Bloodline and the other yes. side of Midnight yes. Bow. Yes. So you're going to do it right this time. I am going to do it myself. It, if it's a disaster, and it may be, it will be my disaster. I don't need yes. anyone to help me make a bad picture. <laughs> but didn't I'll Joe do Wombaugh do that? He you? did. But Joe had an unhappy experience, I think. He yes. did his last two books. But you see, his background was not motion pictures. And he didn't really know what he was getting into. All the agony, traps, pitfalls. I started on in pictures. I've done 30 motion mm -hmm. pictures. So for me, it's really going back home again. What about, incidentally, Claire Huffaker? Did they ever do The Cowboy and the Cossack? Because they did, I didn't see it. Uh, to my knowledge, no. And Claire had had full say on that thing as far as casting went and everything. Yeah. Maybe that's why they didn't do it. Maybe, but uh, it's very difficult. If, that if is one of the best the potential properties I ever heard of. I don't Absolutely. know the, I don't Oh, know it's the a gorgeous thing about a bunch of Texas cowboys take a herd of longhorns to Texas, they meet the Cossacks, and what happens? And it's marvelous, marvelous thing. Love no, that. I don't think it was ever if made. If there's a madam in it, I should <laughs> <laughs> Is, that must be the first madam you ever played. Oh, indeed. I've always been a lady until now. Well, she's a, the madam's a lady, too, as a She was, fact. yes. And yes. all her girls were ladies. And, uh, well, I'm stretching the point a little, I guess. But uh, the, little, the little newcomer that you tried to send home. Shy, yes. Yeah. That's her first, her first uh, play. Yes, it is. It's her, uh, several of the kids, it's their first uh, equity contract. Was oh, that right? And... Uh, I think that's one reason that the show is as fresh and is, has the, the enthusiasm that it does because they're all gung-ho and working so hard and, and very, very talented. Do you have the same people. director they had in New York? Oh, yes. I wouldn't have done the show if, if, if not. Somebody told me that this was, was played a little differently than it was in New York. Is that correct? Yes, we have... Well, I dance in, in the finale and Carlin Glynn, who created the role, does not dance. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the number in the second act, which Larry Hovis does, was... Uh, is a new number for him. Mm -hmm. And, well, it's played, of course, different people, different actors. The reason I asked was that it was a literary guild I saw yesterday. I mean, I, I mean, it was a theater guild uh, day, I yes. think, at the, at, the, at the theater, at the Schubert. Last night you saw it. Actually, in the afternoon. Oh, in the, the afternoon. Matinee. Oh, yeah. the ladies love it. You had a good time. Well, I was going to say that most of them did. <laughs> I saw two empty seats when I came back after intermission. I wondered if a couple of them might have been a little offended early in the piece. That's possible. Yeah, I figured maybe they I had th been. You see, I, th I think that's foolish, actually, because the dialogue is such an integral part of that scene. I don't think it was the dialogue. Oh. I think it's what was going Ooh, on behind like the screen. We should see this. What was going on at that stage? <laughs> yes. I will let the madam tell you. <laughs> Anything we should know, Alexis? I can't tell you because you haven't seen it yet. Ah. You must come see the show. Well, I don't want to don't spoil it. Tell us. <laughs> anyway, the audience did love it. You're right. And it was, they, they were full of, of gray-haired ladies. I, I would get the average age probably was what, 50, 55? Well, I can't see Some in their the 60s and so 70s, much. I'm sure. But they all, seemed, they all seemed to love it and be absolutely unoffended, most of them. Well, it's a very innocent piece, actually. 
And I, I'm amazed today. In Again, the, for the most part, yeah. Well, in the yeah. permissive society in which we live and what one sees in, in the motion picture theater and on television as well, that people should be offended by the best little whorehouse in Texas comes as a big surprise. No, I think it's me. simply that you probably didn't turn around if you were on stage, or maybe you've never watched you from the audience. You mean things going on behind me that I don't know about? I think maybe. Uh, I think maybe. I don't know. Uh, Margaret, where'd you get the idea from? We get tickets. Uh, yeah. 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 I see it, right, Mark? I sold two tickets here for you anyway. Yes. <laughs> Margaret, where'd you get the Their idea from? Friends, for the... they have to come. <laughs> yes. For the mystery, where'd you get the idea? I'm not sure, Bob. I was I was writing another sort of a historical book, and it sort of didn't grab me. I didn't like the idea too well, and I figured the public wouldn't care for it very much. And I said, Why don't I try writing a novel? And I love mystery stories. Mm -hmm. So my publisher and my agent both said, Well, kind of dubiously, what do you have in mind? And I don't know where it came from. I said, Well, how about murder in the White House? That's it. We'll buy it. Oh, <laughs> oh that's great. wonderful. Great then I had it's to. A good way to sell yes. <laughs> then there was a problem of the outline, and you know I'm lazy. I don't like to work writing on the stage or on television fine I'm right there with all my lines learned but in writing well I turn into Scarlett O'Hara I'll think about that tomorrow mm. but I finally got it done it took me about two and a half years how do two you and work? Half years? that it's was because slow I'm lazy. Yeah. How, how do you work on a book do you type it or slowly it no or? I dictate it into a tape recorder. Do a machine yeah mm -hmm. and then you keep rewriting mm -hmm. oh yes in two and a half years yeah. Sheldon has probably done three books Oh, minimum. There are two. <laughs> Why minimum. Did you say? I know, but he no. likes to write, and I don't. <laughs> you know how long it takes me to write a book? I finish a first draft in six months, and I spend the next year and a half just rewriting it over and over. Is that right? Does yes. that get boring? Or do you get, does no, it get tedious it. for you? No, I what happens is very good, because as I go over it, and the material's not fresh, I get impatient with it and throw things out, which is uh, what I want to do. Yeah. So I become a tougher and tougher critic with yes. each draft. Remember and the, I'll do up to a dozen. Remember the Edgar Wallace story, the man who visited his house in the country, supposedly, and the butler came. The guest said, I want to see Mr. Wallace. And the butler said, he's writing a novel. And the guest said, I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was very prolific. <laughs> Mark, how do you work? You, it, you dictate, tape recorder. But, but then when you add, when you, you then, uh, I, then I start penciling everything out, saying, how could I have said that? That's bad grammar. Yes. <laughs> and rework it and rework it and rework it. Well, you have it typed. You don't type it yourself. No, I can't type. Is that right? What a lazy person You're not lazy about you talking. I know I that. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> when did you become, uh, you became an actress in, in the 40s, as, as your biography uh, falsely says. Yes. <laughs> uh, somebody, this was one of those Schwab's drugstore things, wasn't it? Somebody spotted you on the street or no, somewhere? No, that was Lana Turner. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> I know that was Lana, but I mean the same type of thing. You were spotted by a scout someplace, weren't you? Oh, I was doing a play. I wasn't in a drugstore. Uh, I was in a, in a proper th No, I was in school. In college? Uh, yes. Yeah. And uh, in a play. But there was a scout in the audience. A movie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But were they, they were, oh, at that time, I don't know whether they still do. Do they, uh, Sydney Walsh? Yes, they, not the way they used to, but they still have scouts covering Little Theater. Yes. Yeah, oh, they used to do it on a regular basis in, in every Los studio. Angeles, did. Yes. Like Major League like uh, ball, play, uh, ball uh, team scouts. That's yeah. right. Yeah. The reason they don't do it now is because they have almost nobody under contract. Well, there are no major studios. No, not really. With those great rosters of young, no. of young talent, which is unfortunate in a way. I really feel sorry for young people in the industry today because it's so much more difficult. That was like, I always said that I, uh, from college, I went to a postgraduate course at Warner Brothers, which indeed was true because I had the opportunity to study singing, dancing, acting, and there were uh, uh, courses. Not to at, mention Gable and some other people. Oh, yes, and a few fellows. <laughs> uh -huh. And, uh, but today, there's, there's not that kind of opportunity. I mean, you know, young actors get a break in a film, and if it's not particularly su successful, even though they're good in it, they, they may not work again. And, Never seen and it. there's yes. another trap. They may be very successful, and then in, the, in future things, they'll fall on their faces because they're not prepared. Yeah. And they haven't had that training, and there's yes. nowhere to get it today. Yeah. There's a rather notable example of that, isn't there? Well, to my mind, Gene Seberg was one of the most notable examples because oh, such a she was sad. put into a very picture, sad. Joan of Arc by Otto yeah. Preminger. Yeah. That's that and she search was, they made. That's right, and yeah. she was totally untrained, and she became a laughing stock. The critics attacked her viciously. No one went to see the picture, and she was so hurt, she went to France, and to her credit, she became an actress. She was so good, breathless. Do you remember a film called Oh, Breathless? of course I do, wonderful, yes. wonderful film. Yeah, she was good. But that destroyed her, I guess, didn't it? Pretty much. There was a... There was a, a graffiti on an auto bumper referring to Joan of Arc a few years ago in Chicago, which said, Joan of Arc is alive and medium well. 
That's terrible. Oh, that, is not that, awful. that is really bumper humor. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> Margaret, have you ever acted? I mean, oh, officially? yes. Yes, she has. In yes. A lot. I know you played the piano. But, <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> no, I did, I've done a lot of summer stuff and winter stuff. Yes, I didn't know that somehow. Mm, yeah. I'm going back to it. It's easier than writing. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, murder it, uh, murder it, Providence, or something. Yeah. <laughs> you think up a few more titles for me, Bob. I'll, I'll work it. You come up with one. <laughs> Good. What, what have you enjoyed the most in the theater? A what vehicle, not? a person, an incident. What's what's your highest, your brightest in the memory? Theater. Yeah. Every funny, night. poignant, anything. Uh, every night, I've, it's it's so stimulating. I, I, you know, in, you mean in regard to me? Yeah. Oh, just personally, <laughs> I mean. That must have been a good one. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I. I said, uh, I remember when in, in Follies, which uh, was a, a Stephen Sondheim. In which you were fantastic. You were marvelous. Yeah, we saw yes. it in New York. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, well, it was pretty good material that. And um, I had been working on a laugh, which is a very delicate thing. Right. As you know, Mark. As you, as Sydney knows. Yes. Uh, and I'd been working and working on a laugh. I sensed that it was there, because the audience usually indicates that they want to laugh at a, at a certain thing. And you find the way of reading the line so that it does communicate and they indeed do laugh. And I had been working on it for about, I think, six or seven months, I guess. And it was just before an exit. And one night, I finally got it. And I was so pleased with myself, I turned right around and walked into a post. Give me another laugh. Yes. Uh -huh. Did you I leave that the in? the first one and not the second. <laughs> you know, but I thought any time on stage, you know, you say, wow, that was really something. Something disastrous yeah, will happen immediately. That's so funny about life. I, I, I speak to women's clubs and stuff and books and things. And I got a laugh only once. On, on one incident at one particular place, I got a good laugh, and I have never been able to repeat it. And I don't know what got it that first time, and I tried and tried and can't get it again. Because you tried and tried. It's a Probably. lost. It's a lost laugh. No, that's <laughs> usually what happens. If you try and re you cannot repeat it, you can recreate it in a sense, and that's what happens in the theater too when you lose them. And if you try and try to get it, you, you're making more and more effort, and the more effort that's put into it, the it, further obvious you, you're tense, maybe, and yes. it, it communicates. Yes. Yeah. Alexis, don't you also find that? Audiences vary, oh. so that a show will play one night with laughs at a certain place at great pace, and another night the audience is just dead and you're fighting to win them. Oh, it's amazing. And within the same area, because you, they certainly do around the country. Mm. Same geographical area. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that yeah. they should vary as much as they do. I want to tell you, though, that people in uh, Atlanta have a lot more laughs than people in Chicago. Really? <laughs> yes. Well, with this piece, which of course is a southern, they're laughing at your southern accent. A southern, a southern piece. It, well, oh, come on! <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. It was. An Englishman came to the show the other night, and he thought it was wonderful. But what does he know? <laughs> I would think Atlanta would be a good place. Yeah. Well, they just had the best time. But there's certain, you know, that is there's a lot of it that is southern humor that does escape yeah. escape a Yankee mentality, evidently. You ever right. find Friday nights the worst night of the week? Saturday. Fr oh, well, the Saturday really? usually. Well, um, the one I used to work Friday night, they were dead. I don't know whether they'd had too much to eat or what. I used to do a lot of dinner theaters. Maybe ah. they'd had too much to eat. And but... drink, too. I think that oh, yes, Friday or Saturday. Friday night yes, was dead. Uh, yes. About halfway through, toward the end of the first act, they. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I, there was a woman in the front row asleep the other night, and I make an exit on a ramp, and I was so tempted to say, come on, honey, wake up, it's over. You know, <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the show, it was, so, it was so fun. Why didn't you? <laughs> I think no, the worst audiences better. are charity audiences. When you oh, have, what? at the beginning, charity. Oh, oh, When yes. you have, and it's usually near the first few months of a show, if it's a hit, all these charities are bought seats. I'm sure you've had that experience, yeah. Margaret. And they sit there. They've paid 200 or 500 or 1,000 dollars a ticket, and they fold their arms and say, "Go ahead, entertain me." For that <laughs> yes. kind of they're mad be funny. Be funny. Be funny. Yeah. Oh, funny. John Fischetti wanted me to tell you that he sat behind you at the ballet the other night. John is the cartoonist, the Pulitzer yes. Prize cartoonist. Did I behave the, myself? Sometimes <laughs> he said you're very pretty. He turned to his wife and said, "Isn't that Alexis Smith?" And she said yes, and he admired you, and he wanted me to tell you how pretty you were. Well, that's very nice. Thank you. I, now I've done my mission for yes. John. <laughs> yes. I don't know if Karen will like it, but John <laughs> told me to tell nice. you. You're working on another novel now, though, are you? I'm afraid to even think about it, Bob. You're thinking? You're, you're not thinking about another novel now because you're afraid? <laughs> yes. Really? But uh, I may do another one. But well, it's, how, it's if you're, a lot of work. If you're 
a book of the month of alternate so. on your first book, how can you not do another one? On your first novel, I mean. Well, I may try. I'm not sure. Sheldon? All you need is a title. <laughs> That's right. I just yes. need a title to get going, don't <laughs> I? Sydney has start. been, how many, all your books have been bestsellers? Uh, yes. The first one sold three copies originally at hardcover, The Naked Face. Yeah. But after the success of The Other Side of Midnight, <laughs> Went back it's now, and became a... Well, it's up to two and a half million in softcover. Oh, that's not bad. That's that's not bad. bad. Well, it's not do. fair to the rest of the authors in the country, but it's not bad. That's right. That's unfair. Yeah. <laughs> we'll blacklist him, shall we? No, he's too good. <laughs> Mother, will, your, will your book be a film? It's been sold to Dick Clark. Oh, how wonderful. For a television film. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's exciting. I don't know what they'll do with it, but you should write parts in it for you and friends like me, and they can get us all jobs. <laughs> all right, fine. Okay. Well, oh, yes, why don't you write a book called The Madam at the White House? <laughs> keeps oh, going. that might sell that title. <laughs> it's really, have you had any reaction from people uh, in the administration? I mean, people who've no, been I, at the I, White House. I haven't hit Washington yet on this tour. No, well, well, that'll be, be fun. That'll be fun. Well, watch some of the... Some of my friends in Washington have been trying to figure out who the characters are, but they don't resemble anybody I ever knew. Well, I hope I not. I certainly wouldn't kill off Dean Acheson. No, she, she kills off the Secretary of State yeah. in her oh. book. Please, that's my murder. And we can't tell you who killed, her, killed him off because it would be unfair. Thank you. Please don't. Will, <laughs> I want people to buy the book. have to read the book. <laughs> he <laughs> wouldn't even tell the first four pages of his. <laughs> so we're certainly no, not I like gonna... to surprise the audience. Yeah, well, no, that's a readers. good surprise. I think that, so. That would give away a nice, a funny little incident, yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't mystery, though, one of the hardest forms to write? Murder mysteries? Mysteries? I don't know. I've never written any no, other kind of a novel. You know, what, what do, do you think? think? In a way, it is, because it's very complex. Everything has to fit together. Mm -hmm. And the fine line you walk is in revealing enough so that you're playing fair with the reader mm -hmm. and not revealing enough so that the yes. reader's ahead of you. So it's unfair And the fun's yourself. gone. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Does That's very true. Does Cliff work with you at all? On, or do you consult with him? No? Does he read the stuff in the manuscript? He's read this one. You know what he did? He said he enjoyed it, but he found two typos. Wouldn't you know it? <laughs> <laughs> two typos in the finished book. Yeah. And the finished but didn't book. didn't he find it? But in the second edition, they'd been taken out. Did he find any errors in, uh, in your manuscript? I mean, errors of procedure or description? No, in the book, no. It didn't save him many gaffes. No, well, he didn't, he didn't see it until after it was in hardcover finished. Well, you didn't show it to him no, in the manuscript? No, I never showed it. No, he's never seen any of my books until they're finished. Oh. Our careers are strictly his and hers. <laughs> that's not bad. Well, it's lasted for 24 years, <laughs> this marriage, <laughs> so maybe that's why. What is your favorite? Uh, you got a, you got a, a, a Drama Critics Award and a Tony in New York. And you've Which done, is my favorite. <laughs> and you've done, no, I, I, your favorite play is what I was wondering. <laughs> <about. laughs> and uh, how many movies have you done? Oh, I don't, about 40, I guess. I don't know. I haven't. But do you have a favorite play or a favorite uh, film? Well, I certainly would think Follies would mm. would be the favorite play because it, it turned my my life around. Well, in that's a way. the one you got the awards for. Yes. Yeah. And uh, film. The last one I did, I I really loved a lot. It was uh, called Casey's Shadow, which was not particularly successful. Unfortunately, I don't know why. Casey's it, Shadow. Yes, it was. Did you uh, see it? With, yes, uh, I did. Wasn't that a good picture? I thought it was very good. And I don't know what, what happened with I don't the, either. Uh, the well, I, one thing, I think Columbia at that time, that whole uh, Beagleman thing exploded. Oh, yeah. And the yeah. studio was very preoccupied with that as yeah. opposed to selling the picture. Well, but it was with Walter Matthau, who was, I think was one of the best Walter's things Walter's brilliant. done. Yeah. And, you uh, were lovely in that, really. She was well, lovely in everything. Yes, I know she yeah. is. Oh, that's yeah. what the man said. It's up behind me. <laughs> Alexis, John don't Pichetti. let him turn your head. <laughs> <laughs> Properly fischetti. But, uh, and Marty Ritt directed it, who is a brilliant director. Yes. And Ray, uh, Ray Stark produced, and, and it was a, a lovely experience. It was one of the best working experiences I've had in film, certainly. Good. We have to cut off because the news has to follow us in this very studio very shortly. Thank you. We've been talking with Alexis Smith, who is in a play called The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, which is now at the Schubert Theater and will be there at least through July 6th. And you probably will enjoy it as much as the audience did yesterday, which was tremendously. Sidney Sheldon, who has his fifth book out, Rage of Angels, a book about a young New York woman lawyer and what happened to her on the first day of her new career, a very traumatic thing which she finally overcomes, thanks to Mr. Sheldon. And finally, Margaret Truman, 
And Margaret, of course, has done a number of books, four of them to be exact. <laughs> this is her fifth, Murder in the White House, published by Arbor House. And if you want to find out who killed whom in the White House and why, you'll have to get the book and read it, because I ain't going to tell you. <laughs> thank, thank you for you. watching, and thank you for coming. Thank Don't you very see you. much, Bob. I enjoyed it. Thank you. When you think sports, think Delpar. Delpar has everything for every sport. 8,000...